So I want to introduce an issue, which is not enough love for exponential long codes. So we're going to look into that right now. I'm going to double wield here. So I'm sure this will work. Yes. All right. So the thing with long codes is that not enough love, right? People love the Huffman. They love the arithmetic. And, you know, you talk about Gollum, and they're like, well, what's that, right? And it turns out we use them, they're interesting, and uh, with the David project, I had a chance to kind of re-implement the AV1 version, and to make you kind of a, appreciate what the AV1 version I, is, I figured I'd explain what they are, and kind of the evolution, and how we got to where we are. So, let's dive right in. For those who, doesn't, who don't know, so the Gollum code is like the classic version, you'll start with a prefix, and this is just like a series of ones, and uh, they are variable length. Followed by a marker bit that's going to be in zero, and uh, this says, "Okay, we're separating the prefix from the suffix." And in the classic Gollum codes, the suffix is a fixed length, right? So the way to think of this is kind of like when you're doing a division. So when you're doing a division, you're going to have the quotient and the remainder. So the first part kind of gives you the quotient, and the second part gives you the remainder. So that makes total sense. Everybody understands. We're going to explain it again. So with an example, so if you start with this code here, which is 42, what happens is you get your uh, two one-bit prefix bits, and then your marker bit, and then so so you know you'll have <coughs> sorry about that. So you know you have two to the four, which is 16, which is going to be your quotient, and then you multiply two with 16, which gives you 32, and then you'll add 10, which is the binary part at the end. And then that gets you to 42. So that's how the classic model works. Um, so people who've worked a bit with H264 are like, that's not how Gollum codes work. It's because it's, in H264 you have exponential Gollum codes. So exponential Gollum codes are a bit different in that the prefix part still remains variable length, but the suffix is also variable length. So basically what happens is that the length of the prefix, so the number of ones you have ahead of the zero, will give you the length of the suffix, which is the number one you have after the marker bit zero. So the same code here is done this way. So you'll have all the ones at the beginning, zero, and then 42 coded in binary. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. So, um, you know, clearly a win, right? Exponential GOM codes like dominate, of course, <laughs> classic. So it's totally a great idea to go about that. Um, so in this example, it's a bit biased, of course, just the Classic Gollum codes work a bit better. Um, but the idea with exponential Gollum codes is that every time you add a bit, instead of adding a single or a doubling the amount of codes, sorry, instead of adding a constant amount of codes, you, add, you actually double your amount of codes. So for bigger codes, technically you should scale better. And you sometimes for smaller code, it also works a bit better. Um, and what you can also do is you can tweak the ratio between uh, how many, what one prefix bit will give you, and then how many suffix bit you can add. So you can add more than one. So here we see examples where, you know, you'll have once pre, one suffix big to begin with when k equals one, and then you'll have two, and then every time you add another one, another prefix bit, you'll get either like two suffix bit or one suffix bit. So that helps you to scale. So basically what you want to start doing is trying to tune what you're trying to code in order to get the shortest uh, length for what you want to get, or for the range you're trying to cover. And some very clever people even made adaptive schemes of this. So you can actually change your K as you're decoding or encoding stuff. So you know, we could have like a CA Gollum or CA Gollum, you know, to match CABAC and all these other things. Um, but yeah, that, that, you know, like, well, so you're going to ask, well, okay, so you're talking about AV1, you're talking about these cr crazy cool, super adaptive Gollum codes. I guess AV1 has those? Not at all. Sorry about that. They have something called sub-exponential GOM codes. And so that's what I want to talk about and present to you. So now that you have all the background, you're all GOM code experts, let's move in. So one thing that's interesting about sub-exponential GOM codes in any one is that, uh, so the first prefix bit you add will add the same amount, will not actually, sorry, add a suffix bit. So um, this will make actually shorter codes for the the first few symbols you get. And what also it does, it'll shift 
your bits so, so that when you add a new bit to the prefix, you are, you're always matching a power of two, right? So you can see that in the example here, uh, when I go to four, four is a power of two, right? Then I add another bit there. So I'm always aligned. Uh, and that's got some interesting properties. And then it kind of becomes exponential golem after that until you reach the end. So another particularity about uh, AV1 is that you will, I, you will specify the number, the maximum number of bits, or the maximum code length you're willing, you're willing to decode, right? And that, the reason for that is what you can do is, as you can see, the marker bit goes away. The marker bit disappears when you reach the, the end of your codes because we know what your maximum length is. So we don't need a marker anymore to tell us what to do. So we can use that marker code actually as information. So you can see that the marker code actually becomes, or yeah, the prefix bit actually becomes a one in the value and we use that to decode it. So that, I thought that was really interesting. And the fact I explained before that we align to powers of two means that we always have a power of two, which is dividable by two. So we add that extra bit that allows us to reach the end of the range we're doing. So I thought that was also interesting. So yeah, basically that's what it is. Thanks for your time. Um, I have time for questions. That was so fast. That was lightning speed.